friends to the formal engineering classroom myself Sunil Jangit and we are starting the dynamics of fluid before starting I have mentioned here the two names that played the key role in the fluid dynamics the Leonard Euler and the Daniel Bernoulli the Euler was a Swiss mathematician physicist astronomer logician and engineer and he also introduced much of the modern mathematical terminologies and notations that we are using in the current days. His role in the fluid mechanics is providing his well-known equation that is termed as Euler's equation. Similarly, Daniel Bernoulli was also a Swiss mathematician, physicist, and he is a prominent mathematician in the Bernoulli's family. He also carried work on the Euler's equation and he provide the practical application of the Euler's equation that is known as in the form of Bernoulli's equation. Actually Bernoulli's equation is the integral form of Euler's equation. So in this lecture we will see both the Euler's equation and the Bernoulli's equation. So in the dynamics of fluid we will deal with the forces and energies responsible for the acceleration and deceleration of fluid obviously in this section we will deal with the all the forces that are responsible like inertia force viscous force shear stresses that is also the viscous force there is pressure force and the gravity force we will include all the force in this section and we will drive the Bernoulli equation and we know that is in the gate IES and PSU examination there are so many questions from this section that are from the Bernoulli equation so we will also see in the coming lecture what how can we use and how can we solve the numericals on this topics so in this lecture we will drive the Euler equation and after that we will see how the Bernoulli's equation is varying from the Euler's equation and how the assumptions are work here and how many assumptions are available in the Euler's equation and how many assumptions are available in the Bernoulli's equation okay so let's start the lecture and we are starting the derivation of Euler's equation the in this derivation we are actually providing the energy balance and we are simply saying uh, that is this is the law of the physics that is the all energy energy is always be conserved so there are the two forms in this case we are providing there is one is the Euler's equation and second one is the Bernoulli's equation okay so let's start so in this case we are considering a fluid element in this case the fluid element volume or we can define here the volume of this fluid element is dx dy and dz so we are saying here the volume of this fluid element volume is dx dy and dz okay so as we are dealing with the forces so in the fluid mechanics or especially in dynamics we are dealing with the four basic forces so the forces are first we can say that the forces are first I am taking the shear force shear force second I am saying pressure force pressure force third I am saying gravity force gravity force and fourth I am saying the inertia force inertia force so the four forces are under consideration here okay now so here I am taking my first assumption and I am saying so I am saying first assumption so the first assumption we are considering is fluid is ideal so friends if the fluid is ideal in that case we can say that there is viscosity of that fluid is zero so if the viscosity of the fluid is zero so according to Newton's law of viscosity that we know that is tau is equals to mu du upon dy so in this case as mu is going to be zero in that case the tau is also going to be equal to zero so we are saying here the shear stress is zero so if the shear stress is zero in that case we are saying the shear force shear force is also zero so according to our first assumption for this equation we are saying there is no shear force available as the fluid is ideal here 
okay so we are saying in this case the shear force is zero but as we will lead to the laminar flow or viscous flow in that case we will include this shear force in the equation and then we will see the navier stoke equation but now for this euler's equation we are saying the shear forces are zero as the fluid is ideal here okay now second let's suppose if i'm saying that is if this fluid particle is in the space in such that there is gravity force or gravitation acceleration is acting in all around in all direction let's suppose we are considering this one because we are taking every variation here that is possible so we are saying this fluid element in the space and the gravity is all around here so in that case that if i'm saying like that So here I'm saying this R, this is the R, capital R I'm saying. So what is R? So I'm saying R is equals to gravity force, gravity force per unit mass. And actually this is resultant. This is resultant. Okay, so I'm saying this is the resultant gravity force per unit mass. So, what is the sense of this term? So, obviously, we know there is a gravity force we are defining that is F is equal to mg. And if I'm dividing the force by mass, that is F by m, that is equal to g. So, obviously, in this case, the unit of R is meter per second square. Okay, sorry. So this is the units are here is meter per second square. Now I'm saying there are three components of this resultant force that is in X direction I am saying capital X in the Y direction I am saying this is capital Y and the Z direction I am saying this is capital Z here. Okay, so in this case I'm saying there is X, Y and Z are component component gravity gravity forces sorry forces per unit mass in the respective direction that is x in the x y in the y z in the z okay so obviously unit of x y z will also be same that is what that is meter per second square that is the units of gravitational acceleration okay so we have this one so yes gravity force is present here in this case now obviously this is a fluid element so this is surrounded by the fluid so in that case the pressure force is acting all around this one so I'm saying on the face a B C D let's suppose the pressure force is so I'm saying P is the pressure intensity and that is acting over the area dy and dz so I'm multiplying this one by dy dz so this is the pressure force that is acting on this face a B C D so over the distance dx there is some variation of this pressure force and I am taking because the fluid is surrounding this one so the fluid will exert the pressure force on this fluid element because pressure is a surface force so I am saying the pressure force here is like that is P plus del P over del X obviously this is variation over the del X into DX this is the variation of pressure intensity here and it is acting over the area dy dz so this is dy dz okay similarly we can see over this face here so this face I'm saying the pressure force is that P is the pressure intensity and that is acting over the area dx dz so I'm saying this is dx dz so over here so over here there is a variation of pressure over the distance dy so we are writing this is P plus del P over del y dy dx dz just but you can see here okay so this is in the y direction similarly on this back face here I am saying the pressure force is so this P is the pressure intensity and here the area is dx and dy so I am saying this is dx and dy so obviously on this face there is a variation of pressure over the dz so I am saying this is P plus del P over del z dz and the area here is what that is dx dy so that I'm writing this is dx 
dy. So this is the pressure force that is acting on the fluid element here. So yes, pressure force is also present here. Okay, now due to these forces, this element will try to accelerate. And obviously in that case, the net forces will always be equal to the inertia forces. So means inertia force is also present here. Okay, so in this case, we have three forces, pressure force, gravity force, and inertia force. So we'll deal here the force balance. So let them. Okay. So starting with our first assumption, I'm writing that is forces, forces in x direction okay we are considering the force in the x direction so in forces considering x direction so first we are saying what is the pressure force that is available in the x direction so i am saying there is p dy dz is in positive x direction but p plus del p over del x dx into dy dz is in negative x direction so i can write there is pressure force first so i am saying pressure force so pressure force is what so i'm writing this is p dy dz minus i'm taking minus here because the that force in negative direction negative direction so it's del p over del z del x sorry dx into dy dz so the net pressure force that is acting in the x direction so simply this term is out with this term so remaining term is minus del p over del x dx dy dz this is the pressure force that is acting in x direction okay so what is the gravity force gravity force we are saying so the component of gravity force in x direction is capital x and this is force per unit mass so obviously we have to multiply this gravity force with the mass here so we know the volume of this element is dx dy dz okay so we can write that is mass will be equals to so if you are saying rho is the density in this case then the mass is density into the volume so volume is dx dy dz so this is the mass of this element we are considering so we are saying the gravity force that is in this case is simply x that is the gravitational acceleration in the x direction multiplied by the mass that is rho dx dy dz so this is the gravity force that is acting in x direction okay so net force in x direction we can say that there is net force in x direction so we are saying this one that is the x rho dx dy dz and minus this force that is del p over del x dx dy dz okay so this is the net force in the x direction we are considering here now obviously this net force in the x direction will be equal to the inertia force in x direction so what is the inertia force in x direction so i'm saying here that is inertia force in x direction will be so we are saying there is mass into acceleration in x direction okay so what is the mass here mass we know that is rho into dx dy and dz here and as we discussed in the fluid kinematics i can write that is ax is simply equals to du by dt you can watch the lectures of the fluid kinematics for this one that is we discussed that is ax acceleration in x direction we are defining du by dt so this net force in the x direction will be equal to the inertia force in the x direction so from here we can write that is x rho dx dy dz minus del p over del x dx dy dz will be equals to rho dx dy dz 
multiplied by du by dt okay so this is the forces in the x direction here because the net force will be equal to the inertia force so let i'm dividing the whole equation by the mass okay i'm dividing the equation with mass okay so what is the mass mass we are saying this is rho dx dy dz so after dividing we can write here this will look like this one that is x obviously this is the mass so there is only x here in this case there is no rho here so it they will be 1 by rho here that is del p over del x multiplied by this one equals to so this is divided by this mass so it is equals to du by dt this is our first equation okay so this we are defining this is the forces in x direction similarly we can say that there is forces in y direction so we can write there is forces forces in y direction so force in the y direction we can write so here is x so there will be y here minus 1 by rho this is del p by del x so here it will be del p by del y equals to so here du by dt so here it will be dv by dt this is the force in y direction and forces in z direction similarly we can write forces in z direction so we can write this is so this is z here 1 by p sorry 1 by rho and this is del p over del z and in the z direction next lesson we can write dw by dt this is our third equation okay so these are the forces in the x y and z directions okay now as we discussed in the fluid kinematics we can write that is du by dt du by dt is equals to what so we write that is u del u by del x v del u by del y w del u by del z plus del u by del t this is the acceleration in the x direction that is i am defined du by dt similarly dv by dt we defined that is this is u del v by del t so del x v del v by del y w del v by del z plus del v by del t this is the acceleration in y direction and the acceleration in z direction we define this is u del w by del x plus v del w by del y plus w del w by del z plus del w by del t and this is the acceleration in z direction so we can put all three values here in this equations okay so let's put the values here so let me using the next page here okay so there are three equations so we can write the equation like this that is x minus 1 by rho del p over del x equal to du by dt so we can write this is u del u by del x plus v del u by del y plus w del u by del z plus del u by del t this is our equation 4 then y 1 minus rho del p over del y equals to u del v over del x v del v over del y w del v over del z plus del v by del t keep patience pen keep patience friends so z is so z minus 1 by rho del p over del z equals to u del w by del x v del w by del y w del w by del z plus del w by del t okay this is our equation number six 
So this is our new equation 4, 5 and 6. We are considering the acceleration terms here. Now, after this one, I am taking the second assumption. Okay, so what is the second assumption? Second assumption we are saying. So second assumption is, I am saying, flow is steady. Flow is steady here. So when the flow is steady, so I think in that case the term or flow parameter varying with uh, not varying with the time. So in this case the del u by delta term is zero, del u by delta term is zero, and del w by delta term is zero. Okay, so in this case we are saying that is del u by delta equals to del v by delta equals to del w by delta equals to zero here. Okay, so these terms are zero in this case when we are considering the flow is steady. Okay, so let's rewrite the equation. Okay, so up to this equation 9, we have two assumptions. That is, the fluid is ideal, there is no viscosity. And the flow is steady, that is, the variation of the property, there is no variation of the properties, flow parameters, along or with respect to the time. Okay, now, let check the unit of these equations. So, obviously, you can see here, this is the acceleration term here. So, we know that is the acceleration unit is meter per second square. Or you can notice that is x is also the component of accelerating force in the x direction. That is per unit mass. So, obviously the unit of x are also meter per second square. So, the whole equation, all three equations that is 7, 8 and 9 are consisting the unit of meter per second square here. Okay, in this case these are units of meter per second square. So means or we can say that the units are in this case that is force per unit mass. We can know that is force per unit mass is simply acceleration. So I am saying here that is the units of this three equations is meter per second square. Okay. So this is force per unit mass system. Now so let I am multiplying multiplying equation 7 by dx equation 8 by dy and equation 9 by dz and why I'm doing so we'll see this one so first let multiply the equation 7 by dx and equation 8 by dy and equation 9 by dz here okay so that I'm rewriting this one so I'm saying this is x dx minus 1 by rho del p over del x dx equals to u del u by del x dx plus v del u by del y dx plus w del u by del z dx okay this is our question number 10 here then i'm saying y multiplying by dy so dy minus 1 by rho del p over del y dy equals to u del v by del x dy plus v del v over del y dy plus w del v over del z dz this is our equation so this is dy not dz equation 11 now similarly z dz minus 1 by rho del p over del z dz equals to u del w over del x dz plus v del w over del y dz plus w del w over del z dz this is our equation 12 here okay so after multiplying this one let's check what are the units so obviously in the previous case of previous equation for the 7 8 and 9 the units was meter per second square and we simply multiply this equation by dx dy in general dz that is also having unit of meter so in this case all three equations have units of meter square per second square because we simply multiply all three equation by meter here so in this case the units become meter square per second square so why I multiply this one so obviously in this case that I'm considering one equation that is e equals to mc square okay so obviously in this case the units of e that is energy so we can say this is joule this is kg and this is the speed of light so we are saying this is square here so we are saying this is meter square per second square 
okay so means i am saying joule per kg is equals to meter square per second square here means i am simply saying the above equations are in the form of energy per unit mass okay here the equations form was force per unit mass and in this case it becomes the energy per unit mass here okay now here i'm taking our third assumption so what is our third assumption so that i'm saying our third assumption third assumption is simply what this is i'm saying the flow is along streamline okay the flow is happening along streamline so when i'm saying this one the flow is happening along a streamline so first let write the streamline equation so our streamline equation is become that is dx by u equals to dy by v equals to dz by w as we discussed in the fluid kinematics streamline equations okay so by using the first two equations i can write that is v dx equals to u dy okay using last two equations we can say that is there is w dy equals to v dz and using first and last equation we can say that there is w dx equals to u dz okay this is according to streamline equation now look at these equations here i think the term is u dx okay no problem but in this case i want to replace this term v dx by in some term of u because i want to convert this whole equation in terms of u so i want to replace this term v dx by some term of u so let's see this one so in this case when we are saying v dx is also equals to u dy also i want to replace the term w dx also in the terms of u here so let's check the value so w dx equals to u dz so i can replace all the values here so i'm replacing all the values here in terms of u all the values in terms of v all the values in terms of w here okay so let's rewrite the equations here by our third assumption taking over so i'm writing there is x dx minus 1 by rho del p over del x dx equals to u del u over del x dx plus v sorry u del u over del y dy plus u del u over del z dz and this is our equation number 12 here similarly y dy minus 1 by rho del p over del y dy this is v del v by del x dx plus v del v over del y dy you can check all the equations so there is no problem v del v over del z dz equation number 13 now z dz minus 1 by rho del p over del z this is rho here into dz equals to w del w by del x dx plus w del w over del y dy plus w del w by del z dz minus sorry not minus this is the equation number 14 here okay so we replace all the values here okay clear okay now take a look at this term simply this term if i'm taking this one let's say this one so i think the term u del u by del x can be written as 1 by 2 del u square by del x okay because when you differentiate this one obviously you will differentiate it like what you are saying that is this is so there is 1 by 2 here so there is 2u del u by del x in this case 2 is going to be cancelled out over here so this is equals to u del u by del x so i can replace this term like this that is 1 by 2 del u square by del x and the whole the terms here okay so let's rewrite the our equation obviously i know the derivation is very much long but we want to know every point and every condition here so i'm writing the equations again i'm writing here that is x dx minus 1 by rho del p by del x dx 
equals to I am taking 1 by 2 common over here and writing the whole equation like del u by del x plus del u square by del y plus del u square by del z okay this is our equation 15 then this is minus here so y dy minus 1 by rho del p over del y dy equals to 1 by 2 in terms of v here so i'm writing del v square by del x plus del v square by del y plus del v square by del z so request number 16 okay then z dz 1 by rho del p over del z dz equals to 1 by 2 this is del w square by del x plus del w square by del y plus del w square by del z is our equation number 17 here okay now so we have this equation like here oh sorry there are terms here that is here dx here dy here dz this is also dx dy dz also here dx dy and dz here okay so we can write the equation like that now obviously this whole term is the total derivative of u square I mean this whole term can be written as or I can write that I'm writing here that is the term del u square by del x dx plus del u square by del y dy plus del u square by del z dz is equals to simply d u square is the total derivative of this term so we can replace this equations here so i'm rewriting this one that is x dx minus 1 by rho this is del p over del x dx equals to 1 by 2 d u square that is 18 okay that is y dy minus 1 by rho del p over del y dy equals to 1 by 2 d v square that is 19 equation number then z dz minus 1 by rho it's del p over del z dz 1 by 2 d w square this is our equation number 20 here okay so we replace this one we simply put all these three values now let add all three equations here so when we add all three equations here so let i'm saying sorry that is adding adding equation so i think that was 18 19 and 20 18 19 and 20 so i'm writing this one like that that is this is x dx plus y dy plus z dz minus so i'm taking one by row common here here the terms are del p over del x dx plus so this is del p over del y dy plus del p over del z dz equals to so i'm taking one by two common here i'm writing this is du square plus dv square plus d w square here okay we are adding all three equations so this is our equation 21 here now let's take a look here now so i think in this case also this is the total derivative of p so we can write x dx plus y dy plus z dz and this is one by rho and this whole term can be written as dp and you can see here dp is the total derivative the total derivative of is this one is here so this is equals to 1 by 2 du square plus dv square plus dw square this is our equation 22 okay now so in this case we have got this equation now this whole term that is actually u v and w are the component of velocity v here 
capital V as we present the velocity here. So we can write this whole term like that. That is, we can write this one that is x dx plus y dy plus z dz minus 1 by rho dp is equals to 1 by 2 d v square. Okay, this is our equation 23. Now, as we take in the x, y and z are the component of acceleration in the respective direction x, y and z, but we know on the earth there is no acceleration in the x direction and there is no acceleration in the z direction. There is only acceleration available in the negative y direction that is in downward direction and the value of that gravitational acceleration is g. So from here we can say that there is x is equals to z that is equals to 0 but we can say y is equals to minus c that is in negative y direction. So we can write this one that is minus g dy minus 1 by rho dp is equals to 1 by 2 d v square is our equation 24. Okay, now let's rearrange the equations and we can write this one that is dp by rho. This is dp by rho here plus 1 by 2 dv square plus g dy equals to 0. This is termed as Euler's equation. Got it? This is Euler's equation. So in the Euler's equation, we take three assumptions. We first define that is flow is ideal, that is fluid is ideal. Second, we say that there is flow is steady. And third, we say that there is the flow is along the streamline. So this we are defining the Euler's equation. Now, I told you that is Bernoulli equation is the integral form of Euler's equation. But in the Bernoulli equation, there is one more assumption. So we are saying that is Bernoulli equation, that is Bernoulli's equation. equation is considering one more assumption that is I'm saying this is fourth one and remember this fourth assumption is for the Bernoulli not for the Euler for the Euler there is only three assumptions I'm repeating again for the Euler's equation only three assumptions are there that is fluid is idle flow is steady and the flow is along streamline but Bernoulli equation considering one more assumption that is flow is incompressible flow is incompressible okay means what means the density change is zero means density remains constant now as we are doing this one so we can say that there is Bernoulli is considering four assumptions including that is flow is incompressible so let we integrate this one so we are writing this is dp by rho plus 1 by 2 dv square plus integral g dy equals to 0 here. Now as we are considering rho is constant we can take it out from the integral sign. Okay but the in Euler equation I am saying this is not constant this is variable but in the Bernoulli equation this is constant so we are writing this is 1 by rho this is dp here plus 1 by 2 this is dv square plus g dy equals to 0. Now integrating this one we can say this is p by rho this is 1 by 2 v square plus g y equals to constant. This is the Bernoulli's equation. Okay and here the units are here the units are you can see here this is 1 by 2 v square. So what is the kinetic energy? We are saying the kinetic energy is 1 by 2 mv square. So if I am dividing mass to kinetic energy, so we are saying this is 1 by 2 v square. So actually in this case, the units of this equation are energy per unit mass. So it's saying there is the total energy remains constant for idle fluid, for steady flow, that is flowing along the streamline and the flow is 
incompressible so total energy remains constant that is the Bernoulli's equation we can take one more consideration here or one more form of this one that is I'm dividing the G here so this is P by rho G this is 1 by 2 V square G plus Y equals to constant okay this is the famous form of this one in this case every term has a unit of meter you can see here Y Y is the simply distance you can say that is that is the elevation so here the every term is in meter so we are saying we obviously in fluid we are defining meter means head so we are saying for a idle fluid that is steady flow and moving along a streamline and flow is incompressible the total head remains constant okay this p by rho g is defined as pressure head this is terming the pressure here this v square by 2g is known as kinetic head or velocity head and this y is defined as elevation head or reference head or datum head etc so he is saying that is the total head along a streamline that is for a idle fluid I am repeating again for a steady flow for an incompressible flow the total head remains constant this is the famous Bernoulli's equation so I think you got my point so guys if you are watching video and you are enjoying this one so please like the videos share the videos comment your doubts and subscribe the channel okay thanks for watching see you soon take care yourself